Hey, what's up everybody? Mike B with Bomb Barrel Bus, and today we're going to obtain perfect shifting on my 1965 VW Bug. We're going to do it by replacing the shifter coupler that's in the back under the seat and the shifter bushing that's under the gear shift. So don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helps you out. If you didn't, leave a comment and let me know what's up, but either way, thanks for checking it out. Now let's get to it. So let's first take a look at a decent shift coupler. So this is the cage and it's in good shape. Um, this is a stock one I got from a buddy. You can see the VW stamp on there. And so I'll show you what's missing on mine are the side inserts. They're just absent. Let's look in the car and I'll show you how that translates into my shifter. So in the car, I've taken the seats out, out of the back, and underneath the rear seat is uh, access to your steering coupler. That's the piece I just showed you, and there's an access plate uh, that goes over the top of that, and I've already removed it. But if we get closer, you can tell that those side inserts are not on here. If you look at the uh, shifting now, let me show you. Here's me trying to shift. So you look at all that travel, all right? And nothing has happened yet. That's a lot of travel. And then finally, you get some movement. Look at all that travel. And then finally, it engages. So up here at the shifter, this is what it looks like. That's all free play. Forward, backward, side to side. And then just to go into first, look at all that travel. And then finally, I can bump it into first and look at all that travel before I can take it out. So that translates into some pretty sloppy shifting. It got to where, you know, I wouldn't have let anybody drive the car because I feel like I was the only one who knew how to, to find those gears. And I don't let too many people drive it anyway. Maybe just, maybe just my brother, the owner of a Sophie over there. But uh, before that, I did let my daughter learn to drive a stick shift in it. Wait a minute, is she the one that did this? No, she didn't do it. She actually did really good. So I'm not gonna blame her or anybody else. The truth is, it's me. Because I put many miles on this car. It's a daily, I drive it as much as I can. It, if, it, if the weather looks like this, then I drive this. The only thing I don't do is purposely go out in the rain. I've been caught in the rain but I don't purposely take it out in the rain. So I'm gonna wipe this down a little bit, get some of that grease off of there and uh, get ready to pull that coupler out. But before I do, I wanted to show you what I found. Uh, Eureka and Eureka. You can see those side inserts. They did, they blew out, they're in bad shape. Man, that's why the shifting started to loosen up on me until they finally just gave. And just like we thought, they're down in the tunnel. So let me get prepared for uh, pulling this coupler out and we'll go from there. But before I get to that, I'm gonna take this opportunity to pull that shifter off and look at the shifter bushing and the clip that's under there. That's what these replacement parts are for, this bushing and this clip. Hopefully I won't need this. This is a whole nother affair in itself. I'll just need this and this, if even, but I'm not gonna miss the opportunity to take a look at it. And uh, it's gonna help me rotate that uh, shift rod and uh, make the installation of this coupler a little bit easier. So let's get that uh, shifter off and expose what's underneath there. And I've pulled the carpet out, gonna take these two bolts off. They're both uh, 13 millimeter. They're not too tight, just barely snugged on there. You know, you're getting some resistance there because there's a spring under there that's pushing up on this, and I'll show it to you when we pull this off. These things are a bit longer than I remember them being. All right, there's that spring and uh, it was pushing up, it pushes up on it. That's where the tension was come. Here's your lockout plate. You wanna remember the way this goes. And uh, the way I look at it is there's a ramp 
on the passenger side and that ramp has to go up. You can tell that's a little higher than that side. So put the ramp on the passenger side uh, with the ramp going forward to the front of your car. And we can take that lockout plate off now. And there we go. There's the, I guess, socket, ball joint, sort of, for uh, your shift rod. And then this looks like the earlier ones, you know, have this groove in it. Uh, so that that dowel there can fit into it. I don't think it's on the later ones, but I don't know. Either way, now we have the ability to turn this over and rotate it. And you'll see how that's going to make uh, working on the coupler a little bit easier. Put down in here is the shift rod bushing. And I don't think you're going to be able to see. Okay, there's a good view. And that looks to me, there's not even a shift rod bushing in there. There's not even a bushing in there. So that changes the game plan because to get that bushing in, this whole shift rod has to come out the front of the car. That's not what I was hoping for. I was hoping that that bushing was gonna be in there and in decent shape and I just had to replace that coupler in the rear. So uh, let's reconfigure and get ready for a little bit of more work. But man, it's gonna feel good to have that tight shift. Okay, to get this shift rod, out of through the front of the car I gotta detach it from this coupler so there's a grub screw here holds it in snug and one of the old tricks I guess is this this bailing wire and of course this one is broken but this bailing wire wraps around the input shaft and goes through this grub screw so that it can you know un twist on you but mm. This bailing wire is already broken, so pull that off and get it out of the way. And with that bailing wire off, then I'm going to take this uh, grub screw out of here. Okay, now that that grub screw is out, you'll see what I mean about uh, undoing the shifter up front there. Hopefully this will turn on the side yeah, and help me out a little bit because it looks like I need to get this... Uh, clip off of here and got some pliers here let's see how easy or not that clip comes off all right that clip came off and then now there appears to be a little washer behind it we'll get that off and after that washer let's see what we got okay put that off to the side and i've got my finger here on the head of this bolt i'm going to try to turn it to this side so that i don't lose that hopefully that'll just slide right out now blown up well uh -huh. that means this shaft should go forward pretty easily now and it does i'm just going to move it out of my way there so i can get this uh coupler off okay so you know this cage looks to be in really good shape and there's what I'm looking for the old VW planet stock piece looks like it would clean up well and it's good news because I I'm gonna keep one of these on board as a spare so if I find that I can just get these uh, side inserts and uh, pretty much refurbish this one it'll be nice to have a spare on board but 
for now let's go ahead and get this out of the way uh, the next step there we go uh, that's the side insert that goes in there blown up so that's trash we'll just chunk that for now and let's see if I can reach the other one I don't want these just floating around in my tunnel all right and we'll clean that up a little bit too but uh, the next step is going to be getting this shift rod out of the front of the car so let's set up for that had to take the spare tire out uh, there's the hole that the shift rod is going to come out of. This is a 65 bug, and there's the other hole up front, and I might even end up having to take this bumper off. And besides that, there is an access plate under here, right there, that's got two 10 millimeter bolts on it. That's got to come off. That's where the shift rod will be coming out from. So. You can tell I've already lubed them up. Look, I'm just going to get that cover plate off and we'll be back. You got that cover off and yeah, going to have to hit that with the wire wheel and spray it. But the good news is that uh, the gasket is in good shape. It's dirty, but it's in good shape. And uh, it was on there nice and snug. So, you know, that is something that you want to have sealed up pretty good. Um, you don't want water and wind getting in there. So having that seal on there help keep that water out that gasket. So I'm glad to have a good gasket because I don't have an extra one of those on hand. Okay, so this is one of those pivotal moments where I have to send this uh, shifter shaft forward into the tunnel and start making progress to get it out the front of the car. So I really would feel better about sending it into the void if I were to tie some twine off onto this. And as it goes out, I would have a way to retrieve it if it gets stuck. And I would have a line going through there so that I could uh, tie it on the front end and pull it back towards me when I'm ready to put it in. But I, I've looked, I have no twine, I don't have anything. To help out in that way so sometimes you just have to you just have to send it i don't know how far i got but uh we're gonna go up to the shifter now and you know feed it through with our fingers or a wrench whatever we can get on there well looky there it made it all the way out of the front of the car no it didn't go far at all so uh let's see if we can just Feed it. Oh. Well, I'm getting hung up. Oh, uh, we came to a stop. So let's go see how far we got up front. What you say, Maui? Did we make it? Did we make it? Let's look. Oh, look! It just shot right out of the front. <laughs> no, it didn't. It stopped, uh, and a couple things I have to mention here. Look, it stopped, and I was able to uh, use my finger to raise it up just enough to grab it with a pair of pliers and then get, get to this point. Now, I'm gonna tell you, that was not easy. That hole is not meant for a normal human hand to go through and, and be very careful. Everything there is sharp. I was lucky I didn't get cut. I knew to look for it, but every those are very sharp points. You know, you've got to get intimate with it, with your small hand, and uh, there are sharp things there. So anyway, that's how far we are. And look, there's the uh, ring. I'll show you that once we get it out. But now, this is gonna have to come out. Uh, let's come out through uh, that hole now. Keep coming. Look at there. 
Got to take the bumper off, which I knew. But, man, I just wanted to get this far. And uh, let me get that bumper off. We'll get that shifter shaft out of there. Bumper's off. Let's finish pulling this shifter shaft out of here. So there it is. It needs some cleaning up. Uh, one thing I am surprised at is to how light this is. I really thought this was going to be a heavy, heavy, you know, piece of billet steel. Uh, it's pretty light and I'm going to, needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Just going to knock it down with some fine sandpaper so that it can, you know, slide in and out smoother. Here's the clip, right? This clip right here is this one and it's supposed to go into the groove of this bushing there was no bushing on this shaft it's probably fell in into that tunnel too uh, on the car so if i find it i'll pull it out if not that's okay but we've got the shifter shaft out so i sprayed it with some uh, purple power and had a 220 grit and i sanded it until i felt a problematic area and then went sand through it uh, just barely knocked that dirty layer off and uh, whatever rusty spots it was so didn't do any damage to it but uh here's something i wasn't expecting it's got a little bend in it and i don't know if it's supposed to be that way or if that's damaged but what i do know is that it was shifting uh, beautifully when i first uh, rebuilt the car and was driving it around so Maybe some of you veterans can uh, tell me in the comments, is that damage or is it supposed to be, uh, have that little bend in there? And am I doing something terribly wrong by putting it back? Because that's what's about to happen. I'm gonna put it back since it was working good and uh, go from there and hopefully life is good after that. All right, here's the new shifter bushing and here's the little, uh, clip that's got to go on it so let's get that put together no particular way and I'm gonna dab a little just a little bit of grease on here to help it and I mean, very little just to help it get in there all right and if you remember in this tunnel right in there is a little hole take this and imagine this that's what's sitting in there so see that hole the shifter bushing has to go in that hole from the front to the back so it's kind of a moment of truth and we'll see how well this one's going to fit in there it snapped in really nice you see that shifter bushing in there so it went in, I heard a little snap. It's got a good snug fit to it. Uh, I feel good about it. So luckily we don't have to go through the uh, troubles of installing this little piece here, but it's nice to have on standby for future purposes. Okay, so what I did up here was, before I slid that shifter shaft back in, I went ahead and put this uh, some wires underneath there, and the shaft went through it. Now I can lift it up uh, be, and be able to feed it into that bushing right there. So I'm going to need both hands, but you get the gist of it. Uh, let me get that done. Right now with that I can remove this wire and we're gonna make the rest of our progress with this set of pliers. Just 
and forward. Put out here we go. Barn it up too. Okay, we made it through. Uh, wasn't very easy. It was easy at first, and then I guess it got to where that little bend was that I showed you earlier, and I had to get through the from the front and push in with a broomstick while uh, my brother was up here with uh, some pliers moving it the way you saw us do it initially but it took both both of those things happening uh, for this to go through so we've made it this far back here to where the coupler is Now that that's on, I'm going to twist it back this way so I can get to the washer and the keeper that's on this left side. All right. Put the little washer on there. Now we're going to get our keeper. There it goes. Alright. Now it's got to go forward again so it can hook up with the input shaft and I'll have to go up front at the shifter and draw it forward a little bit again. Of course, the ball joint that holds the shifter that's up front is facing up. Okay, so basically I'm going to get this grub screw snug down. I'm going to look for some bailing wire to wrap around that. Got the coupler back on. I got the shifter on up front where I'm sitting. I didn't show that because you saw me take it off. But I'm going to run through some of the gears. All right, that's me just sitting in neutral. We're gonna go in first. Oh man, it's like butter. Second. Third. Fourth. Now let's try reverse. Oh yeah. When in the reverse, isn't even popping out. It's so nice. Wow. Okay, so let's see we got the shifter back on. There's nothing left to do but get my carpet back in. I'll probably go ahead and take it on a test drive first, but uh I think that's gonna be a winner right there. I'll show you this real quick while we're up here. Neutral, so first, second, third, fourth. Third, second, first. I mean, that feels nice. That's the best I've ever felt it. So let me take it on a test run and we'll conclude it. All right, we're back from the test drive and uh, 
I really don't have words to describe it. It is as if it's as good as the day it was made as far as shifting goes. It's going into reverse very easy and not popping out. It's going through the gears. It's shortened up the throw so much. I now feel like I have a quick shifter down there, but uh, kept this off so I could keep an eye on the coupler. Everything seems to be working great. And all I can say is if uh, if you have any doubt or you, you want to make an, a, a good improvement, this would be one to consider. Uh, it was a bit of a chore, but in the end, I'm glad I did it. And it should be a long time before I have to mess with that again. So anyway, if this video helped you out, feel free to like and subscribe. If it didn't, leave a comment and let me know what's up. But either way, thanks for hanging out with Bombero Bus. And we'll catch you on the next one.